Hello and welcome to the new inauguration of Tech Tales TV. Um, my name is Rebecca and I am one of the certified Apple technicians here working at Small Dog. Uh, we were hoping to do our launch today in our brand new studio and things have changed around a little bit. So just to let you know, this is going to be our one and only streaming live broadcast on Justin TV. After today, you can look for us on YouTube. We're going to go ahead and pre-record the videos and put them up there so you don't need to fit us into your schedule. Um, for today's inauguration, I have, um, I'm using a program called Cam Twist, which is a really cool program you can use with Justin TV to give you some cool effects. And that is how we have this super duper Apple logo up on the corner, which by the way, if it starts annoying you, I can get rid of it. So, we're going to do things in a little bit of a different format today. Um, we're super busy here at Small Dog, so instead of the normal chit chat, what I'd like to do today is actually show you um, a live diagnosis of a machine that was checked in with liquid damage, because I thought that'd be kind of fun for you to see. While I'm doing that, I do have our Twitter feed. We are at Hello Small Dog. So um, if you would like to tweet me some questions that we can talk about, feel free. Also, you can chat us right on here. There's a chat window right on the side, and I'll be watching that too. So please, interact. It'll be fun. And in the meantime, I'm just going to yammer on about this poor black MacBook that was checked in with liquid damage. And I don't know if you can see on my eyesight, but you can actually, yeah, it doesn't really come through. There are actually dried water droplets right on the top here. So I have a feeling we're going to find a lot of good stuff inside. So without further ado, let me give you a viewing there. I'm just going to move a couple things around. Cool. And first part of every repair is to have proper electrostatic discharge. Um, regulations followed. So I've got myself an ESD strap, which is hooked into my ESD mat, and both are grounded to an outlet in the room. Basically, all that does is it's um, constantly removing the static discharge from my body and making sure that it's discharging to the ground instead of into this computer, which could damage the computer. You can actually buy these um, and use them at home if you happen to be crafty and like to take things apart a lot. So, I've got my MacBook here, and the first thing that I did was turn it upside down because we're going to go ahead and take this guy apart. I do see that I have seven viewers now, so hi! How are you? Um, as I mentioned earlier, if you'd like to chat with me, I am watching the chat window, and I am watching our Twitter feed, so feel free to ask me any tech questions you have while I take this machine apart. So I took the battery out by just twisting the um, battery latch right here. We're going to make this really nice and basic. You just twist that back with a coin. I used a black stick, aka nylon probe tool. I do get a lot of questions from my YouTube videos about where I get these. Um, I tend to get these from MCM Electronics, and they're just nice, soft, pliable nylon with a nice flat edge on one side and a pointy edge on the other. So the first thing I'm going to do in here, I'm going to remove the RAM shield from the inside of the MacBook. This part's actually user installable, so if you have ever been curious about, well, how do I replace the RAM or hard drive on my MacBook, this is going to be your first step. So I'm using a double zero screwdriver, and if you're wondering, I am a huge fan of the Weha brand. Oh, and we already see the liquid in here. So I took the RAM shield off. And let's check out the liquid that's on this guy first. And again, I wish I had a better camera, but if you can see over here, there's some crusty white stuff that just should not be there. And it's actually all along the metal here, too. So kind of difficult to see over eyesight, but it looks pretty gnarly in person. And now if I look into the RAM bay, and then again, a little bit difficult to see on camera, but in here, there's actually brown liquid that's right along the edge there. So we know that we're going to be getting to some good stuff in here. So let's say you did want to replace the RAM. Well, at this point, it's pretty easy. There are little levers that are right here, and if you just pull the lever, the RAM chip comes right out. Always make sure that you handle internal components, including RAM, by the edges, not by the chips or the gold connectors. 
So if I was replacing RAM, I would just slide the RAM in and give it a little bit of a push at the end. You should never have to use too much force. You do use some force, but you should feel the chip give and immediately go in. Um, if you don't feel that, stop pushing. You may have put the RAM in incorrectly, or you might have the wrong RAM. So the other thing that I said that you could do when you're at this point is replace the hard drive. Hard drive on the MacBook has a nice easy pull tab. Take that, pull it out. Oh, and we've got liquid all over this hard drive. Not a good sign. Ooh, and there's even liquid on the connectors themselves. Yeah. So chances of data recovery from this drive are pretty slim at this point, unfortunately. If you were replacing the drive on here, one of the things you do need to remember, and we do get a lot of calls about this, is that this um, drive is actually in a drive carrier right now. This uh, silver panel on the bottom with the pull tab is a separate part. To remove that, you take out the four corner screws, and those are all T8, that's Torx T8. So that is a specialized driver that you'd want to go out and get. You can usually get that at like Radio Shack or an electronics store. Um, it's also important to note that the two top screws are slightly different than the two bottom screws, and it will impact how the drive slides into the MacBook if you do um, reverse those. So we'll go ahead and set our poor hard drive aside for right now and continue our quest for liquid damage. So inside the battery bay here, there are three screws that are holding the top case to the bottom case, and I'm going to go ahead and remove those now. And I see that our viewers have gone up to 10. So hello, people watching. Uh, feel free again to shoot me any questions. They do not have to be related to this repair. So anything you want to go ahead and chat that is related to Apple computers somehow or small dog electronics, then I am more than happy to answer that for you. So there are three screws on the top of the MacBook here. This one is a shorter one. And there are two long ones that should be here. This machine is missing those. Could be that they fell out. Could be that it's been taken apart before. Who knows? I'm already noticing the next two screws that I'm going to go for are also missing. So inside of the battery bay here, these two black holes there should have uh, silver screws in them. Now, where I'm going from here is there are some screws along the front of the MacBook that I'm taking out. Some of these, again, well, one of them are, is missing. And I want to show you which ones to take out, because if you look into the MacBook here, there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten screws there. You're only going to be removing four of them. The way that I think of it is I start from this corner, and I go skip one, take that out, skip one, take that out. And then I do the same thing from this corner. Skip one, take one out, skip one, take one out. So you should be left seeing two in the middle that are still in, and then every other one is taken out. Okay, now that I have that done, I go ahead and flip the MacBook on its side, and I'm going to start with the two screws that are up here. Again, this poor guy is missing one of those, so I'm only going to be removing one screw. But if you guys do this at home, you'd want to take out both. And I should give all of the lovely disclaimers that if you do try this at home and you break anything, Small Dog is not responsible, Apple is not responsible. We recommend only certified technicians take apart computers or very, very brave people who don't mind breaking things. So I'm taking the four screws out of the back here. The two on the outer edge are shorter. The two on the inside are going to be longer. I can already tell by taking these screws out that they, too, are quite covered in liquid corrosion.